What does manhood mean to you? Well, manhood is probably the most important thing a man can live in, too, is manhood. Um, it is not given, it's earned. It's earned through your duties. It's earned through how you show up for people, um, more so than anything. And welcome to another edition of King Crush Thursday, the series where we highlight and uplift Black men, because frankly, not too many people are doing it. My name is Val Gay, and I'm super excited to bring this brother to you today. He has decades of experience working with young people who have dealt with mental and behavioral issues in, in school settings and in other settings. And then he decided to co-found a nonprofit uh, with uh, another brother who has been featured on King Crush Thursday. And together, this nonprofit um, focuses on fathers reading to their children. His name is Mr. Brent Johnstone. Hi, Brent. Hello, and hello to the audience out there. How's everything? Everything's great. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for being here. I'm so glad that you are here. And Brent, you know, your presence. Um, we are in this conversation seeking to continue to bust open very narrow and myopic myths and, and narratives about Black men. Um, and that the idea is that Black men are more than what we see in the media um, and positive impacts in their communities. And ultimately the goal is for a young king who may or may not have positive black male role models to come to this repository, see the same six questions answered by so many black men, um, well over a hundred black men, um, and hopefully find guidance there. And then for the rest of us who are neither male or even black to be able to come to this repository Again, see these same six questions answered in so many different ways. And hopefully we will find guidance, but also have our minds expanded. So ultimately one day we can live in a society where people uh, are not um, stereotyped as much as you are. And so with that, I want to get started with the first question, which is what does manhood mean to you? And, uh, Great question. Um, manhood to me means experience, means understanding, means being accountable, means it's a state of when you leave being a little boy and a young man, when you grow into all that a leader should be. Um, leader in your family, leader in your community, um, leader in this world for some of us. Um, but manhood is probably the most important thing a man can live in, too, is manhood. Um, it is not given, it's earned. It's earned through your duties. It's earned through how you show up for people, um, more so than anything. Um it's a sacred fraternity. That's awesome. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. So, Brent, who and or what is important to you? Family. Family, community, um, and the world in general. I don't want to sound too corny about that, but I'm a, a, a professor told me at Temple University years ago, you're a true romantic at heart. And so I will say the world in general means something to me. That's awesome. Excellent. Thank you so much. 
So, Brent, how do you want us to see you? Both of your eyes. I know. Uh, <laughs> um, how do I want people to see me? I want people to see me for who I am, right? For who I am and what I've been able to bring to this world, what I've been able to uh, do with my children, right? I, I wanted people to see a lot of me through my children um, because that's one of my... Uh, one of the only things I've truly created and molded total, right? Um, I've had a hand in their life from day one forever, right? Um, I want people to see me through my deeds, the things that I do in my community. Um, I want people to see me for the love that I, that I share. I share a lot of love with this world. I share it first with my wife, my family, uh, my mom and, you know, my siblings uh, and my friends. But I want the world to see me as a person who tried his best to make this place better um, through the work, through his work and through his love. Mm, that is beautiful. That is quite romantic and beautiful. So <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Great. So, Brett, what is your epic dream? Oh, man. My epic dream, and it wouldn't be my epic dream if I uh, wasn't trying to live into it, right? Um, my epic dream is that um, no child goes through what I went through. Um, living with dyslexia wasn't discovered until I was uh, uh, selling out of college, right? Um, a, lot of, a lot comes with that emotional, psychological um, uh, academics, just a lot came with that struggle and not knowing what it was, right? Not being able to identify what was going on with me um, and know that so many people in this world live with that. So my epic dream would be that all children um, could at least be identified with that issue um, as early as possible, right? Um that's like my social calling epic dream. My other epic dream is to live out my days on a nice farm with a really nice lake where I could just chill and walk outside in my in my shoe. I mean, without any shoes on and have a couple horses running around and, uh, you know, hopefully some grandchildren and just live, you know, relaxed out drinking iced tea and stuff and some wine. Uh, <laughs> relaxed with, you know, my wife and just taking in, you know, the world. That's, that's really beautiful. It's such a beautiful vision. I, the vista of it, I see it in my head. That's really beautiful. Oh, Thank I can you. see it too. I <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. And this brings us to question five, which I believe you've actually been answering all along implicitly, but I'm going to ask you explicitly, Mr. Brent Johnstone, who are you? Um, Brent Johnstone, who am I? Um, I'm a father, I'm a son, I'm a husband, um, I'm a brother, um, uncle, I'm a family man, um, I'm a person that's just trying to do the best that I could do with what I have to give back to this world and make it a better place, um, I have a lot of flaws. I have some issues, but through that all, through all of that, um, I believe I am love, right? I am love, and I'm I'm a true representation of that. Um, flaws and all, um, just trying to be better, and in the process, help some people and make the world better. Mm, that's beautiful. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So here we are already at question six, which is, is there anything I should have asked you that I didn't ask you? You wanted me to ask you that I didn't. In other words, what did I miss? Um, I think those questions were great. Um, only thing I would like to expand on if I could around is what I could, I guess maybe, uh, I, I guess it comes in the dream part, right? Uh, I, I think in the, today's world, we see a lot, we hear a lot because of social media, internet, 
the ability to be able to share and consume, right? We consume a lot. And a lot of it, I'm 47 years old, and I see a lot of it with my peers, especially who should be in their golden ages, uh, it's frustration, it's fair, and it's almost like uh, a cry of we can't do anymore, right? We can't do it. We hoping for things to come. And I have a saying, right? The saying is, um, stop waiting for Superman and put on your damn cape. Um, because I believe we are superheroes in our own way, right? We can all affect change if we truly want to. And it doesn't have to be this monumental uh, Nobel Prize winning change, right? It could be helping one person, right? It could be helping one family. But I want people to truly know uh, the blessing is in being a blessing and that we can help each other, right? We the people are such a strong term, but I think people see it as just some corny thing that was, you know, taught through the Constitution or whatever. Um, but we the people are strong. The strength is in the people. And if we want better, we can do better by creating the change we want to see. Yes, yes, yes. I agree. I hear you. I hear you. Excellent. That is excellent. I really appreciate, you know, um, your words, but, and also your actions. I mean, you know, you've, you've uh, demonstrated your values through the things that you do. And that's um, really incredible. And not knowing, um, I see the through line um, between your own experience and the work that you were doing prior to starting your nonprofit and now certainly after not start after starting your nonprofit and seeing the through line with that is really, really wonderful. And so I honor you, my King, and I pray that <laughs> your epic, absolutely. And I pray that both sides of your Epic dream actually come true, <laughs> you know, and, and that you get to fully enjoy both sides of your Epic dream. Um, and just so much for being here. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. I love the conversation. Absolutely. Likewise. Thank you. And stay right there because I want to thank the audience for joining us. I hope that you enjoyed this conversation as much as I did. And if there is a positive and successful Black man in your life who you want to see highlighted um, and heard from in this form, please click the link below or my bio, fill out the nomination form, and we'll take it from there. We are so well over a uh, uh, hundred um, successful and black men. I'm super excited about this. And I often say success does not equal what someone does for a living. They could be a co-founder of an amazing nonprofit or not. We are really interested in all of the brothers, especially those who have a positive impact on the lives of the people around them, starting with the nuclear family and going out to the community writ large. Those are the brothers that we also want to contribute to this repository. And so please stay tuned next week for yet another amazing King. And in the meantime, please remember to spread love and have a great day. Thank you so much. And Brent, that was really wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Peace to the audience. Thank you.